here has heard of technology such as your favorite phone, computer, iPad, iPod, but technology isn't just in those forms. They can help us with problems with like searching the internet, looking up information, talking that we need help looking for and answers online. Today we are going to talk about technology and its negative effects on the culture, health, culture and health. The four topics we will be discussing are the cost, the social issues, health, economic impact, and finally common sense and higher cognitive development. So I will be talking about the cost. The cost of technology, one in particular, which is iPhones or Apples. The iPhone 6, which Apple is charging three times more than the manufacturing cost and components. According to the, a teardown report from a research firm, firm, IHS, the components and manufacturing costs for the 16 gig iPhone 6 cost Apple $200.10 to manufacture. The device is selling for $649. So technology is cheap to manufacture, but the cost, but cost the consumers three times what it is worth. Not only are we spending way too much money for these devices, but we are missing out on what used to be great about life, like going and hanging out with friends, sitting down, eating a meal without technology, interrupting it, having this guy on Facebook what we're eating, going to a newsstand and picking up a paper to read and learn about today's society and what's going on. Technology has become an everyday necessity that most people feel they can't go without. There are studies that show how it affects our health, our social skills, and the way that we interact with other people. So the problem isn't the cost of technology that we and what we pay for it. It's how it affects our growth and our life. New technology is being introduced faster than we can get accustomed to using it. It can be a means for gaining understanding of other cultures, communicating with others, and becoming more socially adept. Unfortunately, this is not the case for many users. Technology is changing our way of life to the core, and many of us are unaware of how deeply these changes are affecting us. One of the adverse effects is the amount of time we spend aimlessly in front of a screen, little to no human interaction. In a recent study by Harris Interactive Group, the findings were pretty clear. Children and teens today spend just under 30% of their time in front of a screen. Add in another 30-some percent for sleeping, and there seems to be little to, no inter little to no time to interact with the friends or the family. Just like drugs or alcohol, Today's technology offers individuals the opportunity to escape troubling situations or painful feelings. Just by clicking the mouse or turning on the television, the user is granted an enticing escape from the real world problems uh, and serious issues. Many times, users experience feelings of isolation due to the lack of physical face-to-face -face relationships, and then they turn back to the screen for unity with other online friends. One of the detriments of online social media is the overwhelming amount of acquaintances we can make online. While these relationships most certainly have their place in society, can they really be a substitute for real world interactions? Online relationships can also be harmful to an individual's well-being. Over the past few years, we've introduced a growing problem for today's children. Apps such as Whisper, Ask, and Secret that allow users to mask their identity have become a haven for cyberbullying and other deviant behaviors. In a study conducted by the activist group Stand Up For Women, almost 90% of children had seen cyberbullying in their schools. As this is such a prominent issue, we need to discuss options for handling the problem. The path to safer online behaviors doesn't lie solely in either the parents or the youth. 
but we must strive to uh, communicate healthy habits and the consequences of breaking the rules. By keeping technology in a main area of the house with high traffic, parents are easily able to monitor their children's activities on the web. Another tool that is helpful uh, uh, in combating these issues is a web filtering software for parents. These programs are helped to design uh, and monitor uh, internet usage in the home. Many times, parents don't even take the time to set up the security or internet filter options that come standard in most web browsers. The key to slowing this problem is getting the parents to be more active in the child's life. As technology has become so intertwined with our daily life, it would be practically impossible to give up all the modern conveniences and go back to the dark ages. But we have to think about the effect being plugged into our devices all the time has on our connections with ourselves and others. With all the multitasking our devices are capable of, uh, they have us in a kind of haze where we don't realize what's going on in the world around us. Can we really enjoy meals as a family or conversations with loved ones if everyone is illuminated by the glow of a screen in front of them? The only way to combat this issue involves some self-discipline. Creating a space in the home that is designed as digital free where laptops are closed and cell phones are turned off can be very beneficial. Unfortunately, this can be harder than it sounds. According to the research conducted by the University of California, San Diego, 63% of people interviewed said they could not ignore their electronic devices when they go off. And just under 75% said that they believe that their electronic devices are uh, impacted by their stress levels. Uh, we must ask ourselves why we would devote so much time to products that are detriments to our well-being. Another strategy for combating this problem is resisting the urge to check our devices. Before responding, it may be better to ask what can be gained from checking it right now. The digital products should be uh, put away, especially if you're in the middle of uh, a meal or a social situation. We need to ask ourselves what we've learned or achieved by checking our social networks and how we feel after doing so. This vast evolution we experience with today's technology poses the question. Is it moving us in a desirable direction as we assume biological evolution does? The problem this creates is that we are in control of the situation and sometimes don't make the best decisions. Unlike natural adaptation, technology is self-driven and more impacted by our wants than creating a strength in our culture. But there's an obvious need to keep society on a stable track for years to come. We need to make a push for the technology industry to better ourselves and not just cater to our social interests. There's a, no doubt that technology gives us the means and the opportunity to reach for something higher. By advocating compassion for others and taking time to develop meaningful relationships, I feel confident that we can overcome the detriments modern technology is having in our society.